Welcome to the second chapter of the course of Difference in Difference Approach using Stata. The chapter name is the Treatment Effect and the Difference in Difference Estimator. This is an initiative of MMS Research Hub and my name is John Riveros. In the last chapter, the introduction, we were reviewing some of the basic concepts applied to impact evaluation. In this case, we're going to review some of them and we're also going to watch this. How to estimate the impact of a program and the justification for the use of difference and difference approach. We're going to mention some generic ways to deal with the problem of selection bias. We're going to review the characteristics of the difference and difference approach. How to address the problem of selection bias with differences. How to construct the difference and difference estimator and the difference and difference estimator in the regression framework. When we are estimating the impact of our program, we need to get back to the average treatment effect, which in the introduction we define it as the difference in expected outcomes. First, we got the expected outcomes for individual A where it was treated when the treatment has been given, minus the expected outcomes for the same individual when it was not treated but the treatment has been given. We were saying that we have problems to estimate the counterfactual, which is displayed in the equation, since we cannot find the ideal counterfactual for something that just cannot happen in the current time, so we need to estimate it. Citing the book of the Handbook of Impact Evaluation made for the World Bank, we can define a problem here. An impact evaluation is essentially a problem of missing data because one cannot observe the outcomes of a program participants had they not been beneficiaries. Without the information of the counterfactual, the next best alternative is to compare outcomes of the treated with a comparison group that has not been treated. So, selection bias arises because in reality we don't have the ideal counterfactual. So instead, we need to consider an approximation. These, well, these equations is telling us average effect of the program as an estimation of the average treatment effect. However, you can notice a difference here. We're not using the same counterfactual. There is non-participants when the treatment was given. Instead, we're using non-participants when the treatment wasn't given. So this constitutes the control group. This is the average effect of the program as an estimation of ATI. This time we're comparing the expected outcomes of the treated relative to a group which is non-participant and when the treatment wasn't given, which is the control group. The expected difference may not be due to a program intervention, so the result might be biased. To get an idea of this problem, subtract from the above equation the ideal counterfactual, which is given by the next mathematical expression, the expected value of the non-participants when the treatment was given. Subtract that from this, and we'll get this. Notice that if we sum and rest this, it would equal zero, right? So it's not affecting that directly. But we can see that this part, the expected outcome of the participants when the swimming was given, minus the expected value of the non-participants when the treatment was given, equals to the average treatment effect. So, from these equations, remember that the average treatment effect is this expression, right? Where the terms are associated with this. The first one expected value of or D equations, and also the proper counterfactual. So, these both have the average treatment effect. The rest, it's going to be uh, the non participants when the treatment was given and the non-participants when the treatment wasn't given. So this constitutes the problem of measuring the average treatment effect, which constitutes the bias. So when we're estimating D as a, average, as a proxy of our average treatment effect, we're dealing with a bias selection here, since we're assuming that the non-treated group when the treatment wasn't given is the control group. So we need to focus on this, the bias problem in the average treatment effect and the measure of the impact. The average treatment of the program D is now the sum of the average treatment effect and the bias B. With this problem, every time we want to estimate the D as an estimate of the ATI, we'll need to deal with the selection bias problem. 
One cannot calculate the size of the bias since we don't know this expression of the proper counterfactual. So we need to make assumptions on this in order to estimate the impact of a program. Ways to deal with the problem of the bias as expected before, as expressed before. Randomized experiments are a solution. Matching methods and propensity score matching. Double difference or difference and difference methods. Instrumental variable methods and regressions. Regression discontinuity and distributional impacts, structural and modeling approaches. Uh, this last one, I would like to make a special mention, mention about this. Uh, in public policy analysis, sometimes economic, economic models, models are used to establish what would be the expected results of an implementation or the behavior of individuals or economical agents. So, it is sometimes used to establish what could be the possible variables that intervene in a decision and what could be the possible impact which relates to model of economics. Characteristics of the difference and difference approach. We know that it is assumed that observer or heterogeneity in participant exists. The heterogeneity is time invariant. It requires data before and after the intervention. This data has to be fairly stable between observations or individuals controlling the initial area conditions and possible selection bias. We need to take in consideration what are the initial conditions, right? So this refers to observable characteristics, which relates to specific variables of the individuals. The difference and difference approach offers an alternative calculation of the program's impact, which is different from the propensity score matching, for example. Addressing the problem of the selection bias with difference. The difference and difference approach resolves the problem of missing data in the calculation of bias by considering the outcomes of and covariates for either participants and non-participants in essentially two periods of time. At least two periods of time is required. The pre-intervention and the post-intervention. So, given these two periods of times, where the sample is fairly stable in those two times, the comparison can be done through estimating the differences. So, we rely on the constructing the estimator, which, given a two-period setting, where t is defined as the variable dummy, which has two possible values. When the treatment dummy variable equals zero, it refers to the pre-intervention stage, and when it equals one, it refers to the post-intervention stage. And letting y sub t uh, as a simplified version of the treated which has this t as an exponential it's telling us the program beneficiary at a respective time and t let it be as g sub a in parentheses zero as the control group in a certain time the outcome of the control group in a certain time or the non treated group both in the respective time t the difference and difference estimator seeks to measure this relationship, right? Which is this which is the expected value of the outcome of the treated in the post intervention year minus the outcome of the treated in pre intervention states given the treatment. So in both uh, time periods the intervention over individual must be identified. The difference and difference estimator subtract from that, the expected value of the outcome of the control group in post-intervention stage minus the outcome of the control group in pre-intervention stage when the treatment wasn't given to them. The difference and difference estimator measures the expected outcome in post and pre-intervention for the treated relative to the expected outcomes of the non-treated, which is the control group. Constructing the D estimator, it is assumed that we are assuming as a proper counterfactual, this one on the right height of the equation, as the control group, right? So the expected outcome of the control group in post-intervention stage minus the outcome of the control group in the pre-intervention stage when the treatment wasn't given to them, it equals at our proper counterfactual. That is the basic assumption of the DD estimator. So, 
This expected difference on the control group when trimming wasn't given to them becomes the proper counterfactual, which is, in the practice, used in the estimations. Considering, of course, that individual heterogeneous effects are time invariant, so the difference between periods of time cancel the possible bias. However, one should be aware of this assumption, since not always the control group would match the proper counterfactual. The difference and difference estimator in the regression framework. So, consider the basic model that we introduced in the last chapter. We got y sub a variable, which is the dependent variable, equals beta sub zero plus beta sub one multiplied by the treatment effect to me variable and plus beta two, which is the estimator associated with the post and intervention to me variable plus beta 3, which is the difference and difference estimator, multiplicated the interaction term. The interaction term is always composed by the time dummy variable and the treatment dummy variable. The estimator of difference and difference following the, fol the, the next idea. Right? Since we got this measure, or we're seeking to get to this measure, where areas that the expected outcome of the treatments in time is subtracted minus the uh, expected outcome of the control group in time, we consider something else. We know by the first expression, the treated group over time, we got the next estimators of the above equation the, from the difference in different basic model. Why is that? All right, let's, let's analyze by time periods this difference, all right? So we're in time one. So the time variable dummy of pulse and pre-intervention would equal one. We'll let the intercept, beta 0, the treatment effect, it equals 1, so we'll let beta 1, we let beta 2, which equals to the first, to the post intervention time periods, and we'll let beta 3, since both of them are equal 1, right? So we got beta 0, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, minus, which now is where the treatment dummy variable is in pre intervention, so it equals 0, we're letting the same intercept, but now the beta 2 estimator is zero because it's the prime intervention state. So this variable equals zero. So it cancels. And also it happens to beta 3 because is this one is zero, beta 3 is now big zero. So we just got two estimators, beta 1 and beta sub zero. Now let's go focus on the second part, the expected outcomes of the comparison group in time, when the treatment wasn't given. This is simplified. Since the treatment wasn't given, assume that from the basic difference and difference model it equals zero for the treatment effect variable. So beta 1 disappears, beta 3 disappears. And in the first and the post intervention years, we got beta 0 plus beta 1, b plus beta 2, excuse me. Since beta 2, it refers to the post-intervention time. Minus, when it's the pre-intervention time, so the time variable equals 0, we only got the intercept. The rest of the estimators are 0. So, when we subtract uh, these expected outcomes of the comparison group from the expected outcomes of the treatment group, the result would be beta 3, which is the difference in difference estimator. And also, this is the estimator that would give us the average treatment effect. So this is the derivation of the difference in difference estimator in the regression framework following the basic difference in difference model. Assumptions in the regression framework. The model must be well specified, as we were saying, implying that proper functional form of the regression model must be assumed. That implies that it should be closer to the data generating process. The error time should be uncorrelated with other variables in the equations, which refers to the assumptions related to the residuals. So, in this case, well, it should not be correlated, the error term with the treatment dummy variable. It should not be correlated with the time dummy variable or the interaction term. Now, we need to add some more assumption. The parallel terms assumption. Basically, this, uh, this assumption is telling us that both groups, the treated and control group, have the same ten, trend. 
So, it's basically that unobservable effects uh, on characteristics affecting the program do not vary over time. So, both groups uh, relative to the outcomes follow the same trend and the same changes. Recommended bibliography for the study, the problem, and uh, the one I give you in the first part of this chapter, is related to the Handbook of Impact Evaluation, Quantitative Methods and Practices for the World Bank. Woolrich Jeffrey has an interesting note related to the difference in difference estimation, the lecture 10 of Tuesday, July 31. Rodriguez Revilla, Econometría 1 y 2, Universidad de los Libertadores, Bogotá, Colombia. You can check the chapter number 11 in order to address more about the topics of difference and difference estimator. Thank you very much. This was the end of the presentation. This was an initiative for MMS Research Hub.